Okay, William, uh, you're in, good. And hopefully we get the other people back. <laughs> yep. What do you see on your screen, William? Do you see a big W in, green, in a green box? Yeah, that's all I see. And then your name right next to it. I wonder if did you make the choice of it being green or is it random? <laughs> no, it's just random. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay. And Megan is coming back. Good. Hello, Megan. Third time is a charm. Hopefully. She's connecting. Megan, I've kicked you out twice already today, huh? <laughs> it's okay. So I'm going to try one more time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay, so hopefully I'm trying to remember who the other person was. Uh, Patricia, I think. Yeah. So, okay. So, gosh, I'm sorry about this, but oh well. Um, what can I do? So, okay, let's go to your web assign and we will begin. So, um, okay, so we're going to continue back to chapter one. Um, I had a recording issue with 1.2. It was the same video as the, the end of chapter eight. But I think you guys were here, but the, if the people weren't, they didn't get that piece, but I hope they can figure that out. So today we're gonna look at two sections and here comes Patricia. So that's good. And and hello, Patricia. Sorry, I kicked you out twice already. <laughs> it's okay. Is this Patricia Maese? No. What is your last name? Arieta. Arieta? Yes. Which class are you in, Patricia? For Annalisa. Ali, I mean, Annalisa, sorry. Oh, okay. It's the 8 o'clock or the 9 o'clock? It's the 10, 11, I think. Oh, the one on Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. Yes. Okay. So welcome back and let's begin. And we're going to start with section. Actually, I think let's look at section 1.4 on linear equations and then we'll come back to the graphing. Okay. So here we go. And let's see, I'll just pick one of these classes, it doesn't matter. And we're going to look at the lines first. So hopefully this we've kind of been talking about um, along the way. And also with, with your, well, so it depends what class you're in. So, Oh, I don't, okay. I don't remember these video problems, but okay. Make sure this is my assignment. Um, yes. So sure. I'm sorry, guys. Normally, I would. Ha I know it happened twice in a row, uh, where I didn't have the section already in there. But I, I don't know what to say. I'm working like 12, 15 hours a day. It's probably hard to believe, but and I'm still having trouble keeping up here. Um, so let's see here. Uh, 
Okay, so these are fine. Okay, so so here we are. Okay, so so 1.3, just we'll go ahead and do that. They're both fairly uh, relatively, these are not my assignments, I can tell, but unless, oh, I don't know for sure. But anyway, uh, so they're still covering the same section, which is graphing. So again, like I told you, well, most of this is gonna be things you already can do because we've been doing this throughout the course. Again, that was the design. So for example, well, let's see. How about we pick number two? And let's read the question. And Patricia, can you read it for us? Graph the function first, evaluate the function at the given value of x. Okay. So, Sorry. It's okay. So, Patricia, what can we always change this to if we wanted to? What's the other dimension? We have the x dimension and the y. So if we wanted to, we could uh, just call this Y right here, okay? And so now we're gonna make a table, huh? And since this has the graph here, I think it's better I just show this lesson right here, even though it has my scribbly writing again, but I think we'll be fine. So we're gonna put in a negative two times the X value, plus two. So again, repeating myself, but a lot of this is going to seem simple now because we've been doing it already and that was the design so that we could go faster now through chapter one, okay? So um, Patricia, what are we being asked to put in for the first x? Negative two. So there just happens to be a lot of twos here. Uh, and then we repeat the process, yeah? So this will be negative two again, but times uh, what? So Patricia, what are we gonna put in here on the second X? Negative one. Mm -hmm. And then we keep doing that, huh? Yeah. So, and we could do this mentally or on our calculator or on our paper and so forth. And also remember class that when you have y equals negative 2x plus 2, which is what we have, then This is to the first power, y to the first power. And what have we been saying throughout the semester, uh, guys and girls? If you have uh, the x and y both to the first power, then what kind of graph does it have to be? Do you remember? A line. A line, very good. And it's a slanted line because we have both dimensions, variables there. So the line's gonna be moving. Like if I'm moving right now, yeah, I'm moving, not only am I moving up, which is in the y dimension, but I'm also moving to the right. And that's what makes a two dimensional slanted line. When we say slanted, that's just another way, it's an easier way of saying that it's moving in two dimensions. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we know it's gonna be a slanted line, and now we're just getting points really for the tool down there this 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 tool here for web assign you only it only lets us put two points in there and we can pick any two we want including two from this table or even another two if you really wanted to so and of course we just fill in these numbers now so zero one two and three and now we just figure out what they all are equal to. So I think if we just do one of these, it's gonna be enough for, the, for you all to be able, I mean, you probably didn't even need my help here. I feel like I'm not needed, yeah? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so let's see. Um, William, can you help us with these? So what's gonna be the, 
the negative two times negative two will be four plus two six six so I hope everyone if anyone has trouble if, if I'm if by I'm skipping a tiny little step here but hopefully it's okay so the next one William negative two times negative one two plus two four four the next one William negative two times zero zero plus two two okay two. Megan can you help us with the rest of them yes okay so t walk talk us through this one uh, negative two times one plus two which is zero and negative two times two which is negative four plus two which is negative two and negative two times three which is negative six plus two which is negative four very good okay and now we're gonna put those numbers in and then we're gonna graph okay oh so i'm a little bit in trouble here because if i if i um uh, i'm not sure if i click this this might disappear i can't remember um so i'm gonna just gonna type these in, i mean write these in case they go away i can't remember if it goes away when i switch probably doesn't but just in case and this was negative four okay so now i'm going to get out and i guess i didn't so now i know for next time so we just type in our answers so And we check. We can also, um, okay, so check. So we're correct. I'm gonna erase this now. Uh, I know you don't want me to destroy my beautiful writing here, but I'm gonna have to, sorry guys. And then clear it. And now we are going to do this. So to graph, we clicked whichever curve. We had just done parabolas before, circles, and we've done lines. So, and again, we're going back to chapter one. So, uh, all right, so we just pick this one. It's highlighted and that means, it's, that means we're asking it to draw, it knows we're gonna draw, try to draw a line. And now we just pick any two points. So uh, uh, Patricia, can you pick a point for us? Any one of these, I guess, would be fine. Um, zero. And two. Okay. Zero, two. Zero, two. And very good. And uh, can you, just for the heck of it, can you pick the other one with a zero? Here I asked you to pick one, and now I'm telling you which one to pick. Uh, but since you did pick that one, I, you, I'm glad you did, because we can also talk about something else here. So what's the other one? With and the uh, two negative two. So we could do that. You're absolutely right. I'm gonna. I'm just now. I'm, instead of asking you, I'm just telling you. Can you pick the one that has the zero? One and zero. Yeah. And the only reason I'm doing that is so I can use this problem to talk about something else, which we also talked about in one section one point two. So here's the line. Um, here's the two points we picked. Do we want to dash it, uh, class? Uh, if we dash it, that means we're not including these points on the line. But remember, this equation was y equals negative 2x plus 2. There was no less than or greater than like in chapter 7. And that's when we also had to, uh, the solution the set of the infinitely many solution points was also the region either on this side or this side. And then if there was no equal sign, then that meant not including all these points on the boundary line. But now we're going backwards to chapter one and, and all there is no less than or greater, it's just equal. And equal means 
all these points on the line are solution points to this equation. That's why that's the solution points are what makes up the graph, yeah? So I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's why we don't want to dash it. And we also don't want to uh, fill either side, okay? So any questions about that? We're all good? And I don't know, I don't like it. It says an X there. Uh, I hope I, we'll find out. I didn't even click submit yet. And I don't know why the X was, oh, I think it was because when I click submit the first time, I had left this blank, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're correct. So any questions here? Okay, very good. So this is gonna be the same idea. Uh, this, oh, so I told you I wanted to talk about these two special points. So you notice here's the line and it's a slanted line. It has a negative slope, it's decreasing. Yeah, this line, when you look from left to right, this line is going down. So it has a negative, uh, it's, we say it's decreasing or has a negative slope. And these two points, this is where the line touches the y-axis and then it, keeps going and it touches the x-axis. So these are have special names, and this one is where the line intercepts or touches or touches and crosses um, the x-axis. So this is called the x-intercept of the graph. In this case, the graph is a line. And this one, um, so Patricia, what do you think they call this one? This point right here. It's where the graph touches. The Y intercept. The, the Y intercept. Good. So on some other questions, they're gonna ask us to compute the X and Y intercept. Okay, so I just wanna use this problem and that's why uh, I think it was Patricia, I was so rude and I, I, I said, don't pick two negative two, pick this one instead. So that way I could use it to show you what I wanted to show you here. So uh, anyway, so to get the X and Y intercepts, which we know right here, it's zero two, it's this one, Y intercept. <coughs> And this one, this one here, and this one here. Just happen to be next to each other. This whole point is called the x-intercept point or ordered pair. Ordered pair just means it matters what order you put the numbers down because the first is the first dimension value and the second one is the second dimension value, and this is one comma zero. So that's what they mean when they say ordered pair, okay, ordered pair. It's two dimensional point or location, and that means that's why it's called a pair. In three dimensions, like we had in chapter eight or chapter seven, it was an ordered triple because in there it was three dimension, X, Y, <coughs> Z. And then that would have been called an ordered triple. But anyway, so <clears throat> to get the um, X, well, this was the Y intercept. Oh, I wrote it here already. So to get the Y intercept, We always, well, when a graph crosses the y-axis, when it touches the y-axis right here, one of these numbers has to be zero, yeah? If you're anywhere, if you're right here, or let's pretend you live right here, or you live right here, or anywhere, then 
what number, what dimension is always the same? If you live or are, are on this y-axis anywhere, then one number, all of us have the same, one of our dimensions has the same address, if you will. So, uh, Patricia, which number, if you, if you live here and here's your neighbor and there's another neighbor and so forth, <coughs> which one of these dimensions do you all have the same number? Zero. Zero, good. And which dimension is the zero if all, if for every one of us that live on this y axis? Is it on the, the y, y area or the x? The y. So if you live right here, uh, Patricia, what's your mm -hmm. uh, location right there? What's the first dimension value? Left, negative, right, positive, or stay there at the middle, which is zero? Stay there. Let's see. Cool. Good. So it's dx. Very good. So for the y-intercept, all of us who live on, I know I, I have never said it that way before, but uh, all of us that live on the y-axis, we have one of our one of our dimension address numbers, if you will. If that, I hope that doesn't sound too bizarre, but it's always going to be zero, and it's the x value, isn't it? Yes. So that's why when we find a y-intercept, the strategy, the logic will be, well, heck, if, in, if wherever a graph touches the y-axis, then it's just like the rest of us that live on this y-axis, and one of these numbers is the same no matter what. Uh, and that's when what, again, Patricia, when x equals what? Zero. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that logic? So then, how are we going to find the y value then, uh, Patricia? What do we always do when you have one of these letters values known? How do you then, and remember the equation was y equals negative 2x plus 2. So what can we do now that we know one of these dimensions values? We know that x has to be 0 for the y-intercept. So what do we do to get the other point right here? We have to do what? Multiply the zero. So negative two times what? Zero. Plus two. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we did up here uh, up when we were figuring out all these points, didn't we? Yes. So what did that turn out to be right here? It was zero what? So what happens right here? Zero times negative two is zero, and zero plus two is what? Two. Two. So I hope it all makes sense that, uh, this is nothing right here, this is scribble. So uh, whenever they ask us to find a y-intercept, then we, I hope, can remember this uh, idea of what a y-intercept is, and that we always will plug zero in for the x, I mean, we can just memorize it, but I, I hope it makes sense that you can just retell yourself so if you forget, it, it's easy to figure it out. So, um, so, and then someone's coming in. Hello, Griselda. Griselda, is that you? Oh, she's connecting, so. Okay, so then to find the other intercept, which is the x-intercept, okay. Good morning, Griselda. Good morning. I hope you're okay. Yes, sorry. It's Just okay, it. <clears throat> that's all right. Um, so we're on section 1.3 and we're, we're in the process, so, so glad you could join us. So we're talking about plotting points and graphing lines and stuff. So um, it's really kind of review for us. So what about the x-intercept? So the x-intercept, if, if a person, I know this sounds strange, but if a person lives anywhere on, oh, I need to go back to my pen here. If anyone ever, let's just, it sounds strange, but if anyone lives on the x-axis, pretend, little creature, even in between, yeah, anywhere, 
then one of our, because we're all on the same uh, horizontal line here, which is the x-axis, one of our dimension address or location numbers is going to be the same, even if I live here and you guys live here and so forth. So, um, Megan, which one is gonna, which one of these dimension values uh, will all of us have the same address for? The y dimension will always be zero. Very good. And then x could be wherever we're at, yeah? So I hope that makes sense. So which one are we looking for? Well, not any, the one where this line touches the x-axis, which is this one. So whenever we're asked to find the x-intercept, we could just memorize it, but I hope it makes sense that one of these is no matter where we are on the x-axis, one of these dimension values is the same no matter what. So of course, Megan, you just said it, but where are we gonna put the, so what are we, which, which one do we know for sure here? That the y is zero. Mm -hmm. So we'll put y equals zero and then solve for the x value. Any questions on that logic? So I'm using this problem here, number two, I think, that uh, we already finished, but to teach us, remind us again of how to find the intercepts. So pretend we didn't know this point. We know it's already one comma zero. We know there's gonna be a one there because we see it and we already did it up here. But just to help us with future problems, I'm using this again. So uh, we would take the equation y equals negative 2x plus 2, which is what was given to us above. You just can't see it on the screen right now. Um, and then what did you say, uh, Megan? We would put 0 in for which letter? For the y. And then we would have to solve, of course, for what letter? The x. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So then what, of course? Megan, what do you want to do? You want to uh, get rid of, you want to move this negative 2x to the other side? Do you want to move the plus 2 to the other side? Do you want to divide everything by this multiplication of negative 2? You could divide everything by negative 2. What do you want to, what would you like to do? Subtract 2 from each side. Okay. So minus 2, minus 2. So this is zero. So we have what left over here, Megan, of course? Minus two X. And on the other side? Negative two. Mm -hmm. And now do what to get rid of this multiplication of negative two? Divide by negative two. Mm -hmm. And negative two divided by negative two is one or one X or just X. And what's this negative two divided by negative two? It's also a... A one. Positive one. And isn't that the answer we knew already? Because we already had it here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any questions on how to find x and y intercepts of, a, of any graph? Not to mention just lines. So this is what you always will do. Okay. Any questions? No. Oh. No. Okay, very good. So I'm going to clear this beautiful handwriting here and uh, move on. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, so now this we've covered already. I'm not going to click this. You guys could watch it yourself. I don't, I don't even remember what's there, to be honest. But here, sketch the graph. And we have this right here. So we could do a couple things. We could make a table of points. And... Um, 
this is interesting. We can tell we're back at chapter one um, because, well, first of all, so Griselda, there's only how many, are both dimension variables X and Y in this equation that they gave us or only no, one? No, just the X, sir. So good. So that means this line, and it's to the first power, which means it's linear, but because there's only one letter, this line can only move in one dimension, yeah? So it doesn't have the luxury of being, being able to move, like again, if I'm moving right now, I'm moving, not only am I moving down, that's the Y dimension, the second dimension, but I'm also moving to the right. So that's two dimensional. And if that's the case, then this would have to have, this equation would have to have two variables. You know, it might be Y equals, it would have to be a negative slope, but whatever it might be, you know, um, it would, it would have to have two variables, okay? But this only has one variable. So, so this, I'm just gonna, I don't have to erase, I guess. So again, this means that one, so if you only can move in one dimension, that means you can only move, uh, Griselda, what dimension am I moving in right now? The Y. Am I moving up and down or left and right? Oh, I'm sorry, left and right, sir. In what dimension Horizon is that? Horizontal. Uh-huh. And is that the X dimension, the Y dimension? What's that? The Y dimension. So which axis is this one? The X axis. So if we're ever moving left and right, that means we are moving with respect to the first dimension, yeah? Does that make sense? But if it's touching the Y, wouldn't it be in the Y? Well, you're right. One question, I think um, you're correct. One, one question is for me to ask what kind of equation this is gonna be. What letter is it gonna have? Oh. Okay, and you're right. This one, if we asked you, hey, what's the equation of this line? Then, and you would say to yourself, okay, there's, I'm only moving uh, left, I'm only moving in one dimension. So there only can be one letter and it's either X or Y, it can't be both. So this is going backwards and you, I think that's what you were doing. So which letter goes right here, yeah? And then what number is this one? Well, pretend, what does it look like this is Patricia? How high up? Four. Four. I mean, uh, yeah, four. So this would be a four. And then what letter goes here? Well, uh, Griselda, when I'm when we're moving like this, the first dimension is changing. Yeah, X is like five, and then six, and then seven, and then eight, and nine, and so forth. Okay. But Y dimension is always staying at how high up? How high up are all these points? Four. And so you're right. When you write the equation, it would be the letter Y. So I think that's maybe what you thought I was asking. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so that you are correct. Now, over here, I'm saying, okay, so let's just go back to the question. So X to the first power equals eight. So then that means when we start to plot points, X always, Griselda, what does X always have to be no matter what? Eight. Eight. So if we live on this two dimensional plane, but you only can be, you know how we're in quarantine, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe this is the quarantine. You can only be at X equals eight. That would actually give us more freedom than we have right now. So, uh, uh, so what would happen uh, for x equals eight? Well then, x equals eight, oh right here is x equals eight, five, six, seven, eight, that's why they put a dot there. So this is at eight. So, but if the restriction, the quarantine is only, you have to stay at x equals eight. 
Well, that's one place you could be. Yeah. Is there any other place you could be, Griselda, besides right here? I can't be over here because that's seven. I can't be over here. That's x equals five. I can't be over here. X equals 10. But is there anything telling you, is there any rule up here telling you about the y? No. So that means we can move anywhere in the second dimension. We're free. Correct. We can go anywhere up and down, but we have to stay at what x dimension location? We have to stay at what? Eight. Eight. Or another way to do it is just to come over here, Griselda, and put some any numbers you want. Because there's no place. If you put if you put an eight right here, you just get eight equals eight, and that's a true statement. Uh, uh, but but that means what what do you write down for y? Well, y can be any number you want. So it could be zero or one or negative three and so forth. So eight zero would be here. If this is one, so this would be eight, one, negative three would be here. So eight, negative three. So therefore, what kind of line does this have to be then, Griselda? Slanted, uh, horizontal, or vertical? Vertical. Mm -hmm. Sorry if that got a little too lengthy there in my attempt to describe, but I hope that makes sense. Any questions there, class? No, sir. No. Okay, so now we just match. This was wrong. This, well, I'm going to erase this now. So now this is wrong because it's just one point, and so is that one. And then, so now we look here. This one is wrong because it's, it's at 8 on the y dimension, and it's moving the wrong way. And so this is the right one. So I hope that makes sense. So we click option C and then we check. And hopefully we're correct. And we're correct. We could have watched this, uh, but I, I chose not to. Okay. So uh, this is the same kind of thing, but what do we have? This is like a Y right here. And now we have y equals negative x squared plus 5. And that g of x form, that g of x notation right here, is like a little giveaway that, um, that this is a function. And to be a function, that means, again, um, for each x value, there can only be one answer here. So if we put negative 3 into this formula, we can only get one y value. So that's what a function means. And that's why they said function, and they said function. And then they gave it away again by writing it this way. And this is like a secret to say, hey, this is a function. But anyway, uh, what happens when one of the uh, variables is to the first power and the other one's to the second power? So remember we talked about that as well in the last couple chapters, seven and eight. And what did we say about that? Was it going to be linear, uh, a circle, or a parabola? Which one is it when only one of the letters are being squared? Uh, Megan. A parabola? A parabola, good. And what's in front of this parabola right here? This x squared, I mean. This is what makes it a parabola. Positive or negative? A negative. And you may remember, class, when x is squared, it's a parabola that opens either up or down. And if y is squared, then it's a parabola that opens to the left or Oops, that's to the right, sorry. I, that's no good. It opens this way. We're supposed to go down. Or it opens this way. Sorry for my terrible drawing. Oh, I'm embarrassed here. Um, 
this way. So this is going opening to the left, opening to the right, opening up, opening down. If it's opening up, then it has to be a positive in front of the x squared. If it's written this way, uh, if it's a negative in front of the x squared, then it opens downward. And on this one, if it opens to the right, the y has to be positive, and this way the y squared will have to be negative. But anyway, we didn't even have to know all that yet. We could just put points in and graph it. So, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna clear this. And I'm hoping, I think it's reasonable that you all could plug the points in. Let's just do one of them. So if we did one of them, we would have y equals negative x squared <clears throat> plus five. But what would we put in for x right here the first time? Uh, Megan, what would we put there the first time? Uh, negative three. And then we would just simplify. So help us out with that, Megan, please. What's negative three times negative three? A uh, nine. So it's negative one negative. times a nine. Good, plus five. So what's negative one times nine? Negative nine. And then plus five. Negative four. Mm -hmm. So negative four. So here you put a negative four. And then you do the rest and then you, you didn't even have to remember those things I was just telling you about, oh, it has to open up or down, but it helps. This we know is gonna open down because it's X is being squared and there's a multiplication of negative in front. And so now, and then with these points, you would have more than enough information to know which one it has to be. So um, I'm gonna clear this. So it has to open downward, which wipes out these two. And then it has to have the point, uh, what did you say? It was negative four right here, huh? Yes. So negative three, negative four. So let's see, negative three is right here. Negative four, no, nope, it's not that one. That's the so let's see, it better be this one then. Negative three down negative four. Does that look reasonable, Megan? Yes. So you could do, and you could also check with the other points. So I hope you all agree that we would get that one. And check. Any questions here, ladies? No, sir. No. no. Okay. So this continues. Um, this, let's just talk about this one. So this has an absolute value symbol. Again, it's a function. Which means if you put any number in, in the first dimension value, or in other words, x, you only can get one answer all the time. You can't get more than one. If you get, if you put negative six and you got more than one answer, then it's not a function. So, um, but anyway, uh, but they're telling you it's a function. They're telling you by this notation, f of x, g of x, h of x, anything like that means they're already telling us it's a function. It's in function notation. They're also telling us by writing this word function twice. Mm -hmm. So thus we should know when we put any x in right here, you can all in compute it. There's only going to be one answer every single time. So anyway, so we would, and now the other thing you have to know is absolute value means uh, how far are you away from zero? So if you had the absolute value of negative six, so that means we're right here or something. So how many units is it to the zero? And when you're talking about how far away, 
you don't say negative units, you just say, I need to move so many units to zero. And whether you move, if you're on this side and you move to zero, or you're on this side and you move to zero, you still say, I'm moving uh, four units or five units. You don't say negative five units or anything. So therefore, how many units is negative six away from zero then? Um, Patricia, how many units? Six. Six, yeah. So that's absolute value. And um, so hope that's okay. What about absolute value of zero, Patricia? If we're already zero. right here, ready? Let's move and go to zero, ready? Go. Zero. Oh, zero units, huh? Yeah. yeah. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. So then here, we're just gonna plug numbers in, and then this absolute value always gives you one of these V-shaped graphs. And if what's in front of this, what invisible multiplied number is in front of this absolute value class? What's always in front here? One the times what? One. 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 We don't need it there, but it's there. If this would have been times a negative number, then the this V-shaped graph would go downward. And if it's positive in front, it goes upward. So that's kind of nice to remember. So that can help us eliminate choices, but there would be enough just by looking at all the points. So let's just put a, a point in and then we can check. Um, so how about this one is kind of an interesting one because whenever you have a zero, that's one of the intercepts. This one is the y-intercept, where the graph touches the y-axis. So um, Patricia, what happens when you put a zero right here? We said the absolute value of zero is what still? Zero. Zero. And then, so zero minus three. So zero minus three is what? Negative three. Mm -hmm. So this will be the point zero, negative three. And that's gonna be the y-intercept. So then we could look here, well, is there any of these graphs uh, that have, this one has zero, negative three. This one doesn't, this one does. Uh, so uh, we could rule out, uh, we could rule out this one. And this one we could rule out because this is zero positive three. So this one's out and this one's out, but so there's two left. And we also know it has to open, uh, which way did we say it has to open if there's a positive multiplied number in front of this absolute value? Up, down, which way? Up. Up. So that means it has to be one of these two, but this one was already eliminated and, now, and this is negative three, so this has to be it. <clears throat> of course, you could also get that, <coughs> excuse me, by just plotting all the points here. So, but I'm trying to teach you a little more as well here. So anyway, so I hope that you could fill all the rest of this in. And uh, we already did this one, but I, I just didn't type it. Negative three and so forth. So, um, and then we can check. So the one that we did is correct. You have to do the rest of them. And the graph we checked is also correct. This means correct, not this one's correct, but the one we picked is correct. So any questions here? No. Okay. So I'm going to erase that scribbling and go and keep going here. This is the same idea. And by the way, what's multiplied in front of the absolute value, ladies? Yeah? Negative. Uh, negative, which means the V is going to go what? Upward or downward? Downward. 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 So that means it's either this one or this one, huh? Yeah? And these two are out. Yeah. And then, you, I mean, 
we do have to fill all these in, but you could do it quickly also, which by learning that little extra information. And then you could also do it quick by just picking the y-intercept, which is this one again. And what would happen if we put zero, right? We're just kind of talking here. But Griselda, what would happen if we figured out this point right here? You know, the zero something, the zero y value is gonna be the y-intercept, which is, you know, either this one or this one, so forth. So far. So what happens if we put zero here? So what's the absolute value of zero? Zero. Times negative two? Zero. Plus three? Positive three. Mm-hmm. And then that means we know it. We well that means, and we also knew it had to open downward, which meant these two were already out. So it's either this one or this one, and this is the one that's zero three. So it has to be this one. Any questions with that logic? A lot of them are num like, what looks like the letter C all, most of the answers. Say it again. Most of the answers are letter C, or if they were alphabetized. <laughs> Is that right? I didn't so, notice that. So there you go. I don't know, maybe that will continue. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think I want to, I don't want to gamble my $2 that I have to my name on that though. Do you, Griselda? No. Okay. So, <laughs> any questions here? No. No. Okay. And this is the same idea as we've been doing before, except they don't give you a table to fill out. What can we change this f of x? This means it's a function again, which by the way means for any x, for any x value, which is the first dimension value, which is on the x-axis, here's the x-axis. If you make a table, then to be a function again, it means for any x you put right here, you can only get one answer for the y dimension. So if you look here, uh, class, for example, at at, at 10, if you put a 10 right here, you better only get one answer. If you put a 10, let me say, how about an eight? That works out cleaner. You better only get one answer here, otherwise it's not a function. So right here is eight. And if you look, uh, this only maps up to only one point, right? There's not two points. So if this curve back, then it would map, eight would map to this point and another one, and then, oops, it's not a function anymore, okay? It's just a graph, it's just called a relation. Everything is, anything that has at least one point on it is a relation, but if it, uh, but if it, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering here, <clears throat> but if you have this situation where for every X value that is there, there's only one mapping, only one y value. That's what it means to be a function. But this didn't do this. So, um, okay. So I hope you all can see if we cruise anywhere along here. So this will be a question in another section. It will say, okay, is this graph a function? And you would just say, let me see. I'm cruising along the first dimension, the x dimension, and then anywhere I stop, I look up, no graph. I look down and it only touches how many times? For this X value, it only touches the graph how many times? Once. Once. If it ever, if anywhere, anywhere here, if it ever touches more than once, then it's not a function, okay? And even if all the rest of these numbers only touched once, if it just falls apart in one place, if there's any one number on the x-axis that it hits more than once, well, then it's not a function. Well, anyway, I'm trying to teach you more things than just the problem because I think it's a nice opportunity. So how would you do this problem? You just really need realize that it's to the first power. This is the same thing as y. And then you just and it's three-fourths x to the first power, which means these are both first powers, which again, 
Uh, Patricia means what? This graph is what? Is it like a circle, a parabola, some curve, or just a line? Just a line. And is it a one-dimensional line that moves up and down only, vertical, horizontal, or slanted? Slanted? Slanted, because both dimensional variables are there, aren't they? Yes. That means when you're on the line, what happens right now, uh, Patricia, when I'm moving right here? Am I only moving up, or am I also moving to the right? You're also moving to the right. So that's a movement of what? One dimension only or two dimensions? Two dimensions. Mm -hmm. Which means the equation better have both dimension variables in it. Does that make sense? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Not really, huh? <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so let's put plot two points and see uh, which graph it has to be. Um, so this is y equals three fourths x plus four. You may remember, ladies, uh, we talked about it somewhat. One of the famous forms of a line is y equals mx plus b. Again, you would need to know this to do this problem, but I'm trying to remind you of lots of things while we're doing this. So when we move on, uh, we can, uh, we already will have had exposure to the concept. So M stands for what, ladies, here? Slope. The slope. Mm -hmm. And what does that B stand for? The y-intercept. Very good. And this one is the y-intercept, which we've been talking about today. So whenever a line is written in this form, we can say, oh, this is to the first power, to the first power. That means a slanted line. So it could be any of these. And this tells you the slope. If it's a positive number, then the line has to go up, which means increasing. If it's a negative number, then the slope is negative and it has to go down, decreasing. And this gives you the y-intercept. So you're like, thank you very much, because uh, that's telling me all kinds of stuff by just looking at it. So if we look at this equation, then this is y equals, this is the slope, 3 fourths. What kind of slope? Is that a positive number, a negative number? What's this? Positive. positive. Which means the line has to be going uh, increasing, which means what? Going up, down, which way? Up. Up. Can we say up? Somebody might say, hey, this is up. Yeah, I would be climbing. A, if I were walking up this, I would get tired because that is up. But we're supposed to read from left to right. So from left to right, this we say is going down. So, so anyway, this is a positive slope. So that means this one's out and this one's out. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. And now we could, we could have just plotted some points, two points, but I'm also trying to show you with a little more sophistication here. Uh, we could also just say, okay, now what's this number? What's this number at the end called again? The B y. is called the what? Y intercept. So now you just gotta say, oh, well, it's either this answer or this answer. So which one has uh, four as the Y intercept? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one, good. Griselda, sorry, there goes letter C. That's, there mm -hmm. went that logic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So it has to be this one, doesn't it class? Because this is the four right here. Yeah? Yes. Any questions here? No. No. What else could have you done? Just pick two points. That would have been a lot quicker, a lot easier. Um, but I also wanted to remind you of these topics, okay? So, for example, I would put zero in. That would be nice. We better get four. <laughs> and let's just do this mentally. What's three fourths times zero? Zero. Plus four? Four. 
So you would get 0, 4, which again is the y-intercept. So there's two ways to say what's the y-intercept. If they say what's the y-intercept and that's all they say, then they usually just want you to say 4. If they say, hey, what point is the y-intercept? What point? Then they're asking for both dimensional numbers. Or if they say, what's the ordered pair for the y-intercept? Well, then they want, that's another way of them asking you to write the whole point, which would then be 0, 4. So you just have to be careful of that. And that's going to happen later in this chapter as well. And then, uh, then you could pick one more. Well, I said 8 here. What happens if you put an 8 right here? Uh, what's 8 divided by 4, uh, Megan? 8 here divided by 4 is? 2. And 2 times the 3 is? 6. 6, very good. Thank you very much. And 6 plus 4 is? 10. 10. So that could be a point. Note I picked 8. Because you want it's kind of easier if you pick a number right here for x that divides by 4 so it's cleaner and you can do it quicker so you might pick a 4 or an 8 or something like that anyway so you could also have done it this way so this better have 8 right here and up 10 and there it is so that's another way you could have done this problem okay <clears throat> so either way I hope we can agree we get uh, this one. And check. And we are correct. Good. And there's another one. You can do that one. This one is find the intercepts. So, so, uh, let's do let's do this one we've already practiced it above but I hope we can now do it a little faster so let's see so to get the x-intercept and the y-intercept So what did we say, ladies, when you cross the x-axis? You could look at your notes and just follow it, but it's also nice if we kind of just reteach ourselves, and then pretty soon you got it really well. Um, what happens whenever we cross the x-intercept right here? One of these numbers is always the same for any of us that live on the x-axis, so to speak. What number is always the same? The x, the y, which one's always the same here? The y. The y, very good. And what number is it always? If, you, if we are neighbors and any of us live on this x-axis, then which number is the y? It's always what? A zero. A zero. So then to do the x-intercept, this is the x-intercept. Then we put zero in for x, and I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> zero in for the y, and then solve the equation for x. So right here, we're gonna put, instead of y equals three x minus seven, I mean minus six, we put zero in for y, and solve this equation. Okay, and Grisella, can you help us solve this equation, please? So we would move the negative six over to the zero? You sure, if you like, uh-huh. So how would you do that? Uh, uh, cancel it out with the plus six or positive six. Good, the inverse of subtraction of six is plus six, addition of six, good. So that's zero. So 3x is left over here, 
So zero we'll plus six is what? Uh, six. And then how do we get rid of a multiplication of three? We divide mm -hmm. by three. So that would be uh, positive two. X would equal positive two. Mm -hmm. And now we put it to him. So uh, the X intercept has to be two comma zero. Any questions there, ladies? No, no. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the y-intercept, what happens if, so the y-intercept is when the graph crosses the y-axis, or touches the y-axis. And again, I, we, we said this, but I'm um, just trying to help out. So what happens if we live anywhere on the y-axis, then no matter what, so if we're on the y-axis, uh, but we're talking about the y-intercept, but no matter where you are on the y-axis, one of these numbers is always the same. So, and what happens if you live here and I live here and they, someone lives here, all of us have one of the dimensions here is the same address, if you want to say it like that. Which one is always the same? The x. And what is it? Zero. Very good. So then what we always do is put the zero in to get the y-intercept. We put zero in for the x dimension and then solve here. So I hope that makes sense. Any questions on that? No, sir. No. And now just substitute it. So Griselda, can you help us again? Three times zero, right? I think we, we've done this enough. We can just do it faster. Three times zero is? Zero. Minus six. Negative six. Mm -hmm. And there are our two intercepts, yeah? The x-intercept and the y-intercept. Any questions there? No. And now we just look for that. So is it the third one, Griselda? Mm, let me see. It would be the fourth one, no? Yeah, the fourth one. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> so, the fourth one. And check. I'm sure if you watch this, they might explain it. And you're welcome to, to do that. Watch that. So the same thing here. <clears throat> The same thing here, get two points by using the the intercepts. Once you get the two points, then you will graph it. Same thing here, same thing here. And continuing here, the same thing. I can do one more of these ladies if you want, or we can move, or do you think you, you got it? Does anyone want me to do one more of them or should we go move on to the next uh, part? I think move on. Move on? Is that yeah. okay? Yes. Patricia, <clears throat> Griselda, is yes, it okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Megan, are you good? Yes, I'm good. Okay. So let's move on and... So hopefully that'll be relatively nice. And now we have the next section, and that is uh, lines. Well, we've been talking about lines. So now they're going to ask us about slope and stuff like that. So So we've done that in this class as well. I'm just kind of looking at the problems here. Well, this one's nice. This is what we, and this is what I meant by, I was trying to teach you guys uh, earlier in the first lesson. What form is this in right here, ladies? This is in the Y equals what? MX plus B. Mm -hmm. 
so that we would just practice one like that. So y equals, so this is the slope. And uh, Megan, what's this number right here? It's the... The y-intercept. Mm -hmm. So let's do that uh, and graph this problem. We know this is y to the first, x to the first. It's, it's a line. And it's a slanted line because um, the two variables are there. Okay, so we have to use the y-intercept first. So the y-intercept, did they give us the whole point for the y-intercept here or just the number on the y-axis? Just the y. Yeah, so they could have, uh, so the point for the y-intercept, you don't have to necessarily write this down, but it would be, because we know it's at negative three. So Griselda, what point would this be if they asked us to write the entire point instead of just saying uh, the y-intercept is the number negative three, which means it's at negative three on the y-axis. But what would this whole point be right here if they asked us, what would this point be? Zero. Good. And why? Negative uh, three. Mm -hmm. so, so there's the y-intercept. And we get that by just reading this. Any questions there? No. Okay. What, this is the slope again. So the slope, is this a negative? Or a, I know I just circled this but there was no negative there so this is a make this is a positive slope which means the line has to what ladies decrease or increase 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 how how does it increase well that's what the slope tells us to what degree to what what steepness or lack of steepness does the line increase and the, the value of the slope tells us. If it's positive slope, we know the line increases as you move left to right. How steep does it increase depends on how big this number is. The bigger this number, the steeper it is. Yeah, the, high, the greater the degree of it increasing. So you can increase, I um, mean, this would be really steep, you know, something like that. And this like this would be not very steep at all. And horizontal means you're not increasing, you're not increasing at all. You know, that's when our slope is zero, by the way. And if this, it's this way, the slope is undefined, but we're gonna talk about that in a, in a moment. So slope, everyone, the de one of the definitions of slope is, um, this is the amount, well, let me just, just say this, it's the rise over run. So I could write more elaborate uh, wording here. And this, the rise is up or down. That's an, that's an amount of movement in the Y dimension. In the Y dimension, the second dimension. So that's a Y dimension movement. And the run is how much you move left or right. So that's how much you move left or right, which is the movement in the X dimension or with respect to the first dimension, which is the X dimension most times, if we call this the X axis and the Y axis. Okay, so, so that gives it away for us. So, but before you start moving, you got to know where, you got to be somewhere on the line already. I mean, I, if you don't know where the line is, you, if you don't have a point, you can't say, oh, I'm just going to start here and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move up five and then run eight and there's another point and then I connect it. That's supposed to connect. Okay. But, but don't anyway. you start on negative three, sir? Very good. You have to know a point first, don't you? Yes, sir. Otherwise, you're, there's no way you're going to get the correct line. So before you use the slope, you have to know a point that's on the line already. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to get the right line unless it's just a lucky guess. So I hope you all understand we have to start right here.
Uh, well, we have to start with a point we know. We could have we could have picked another number right here. Say you put an eight in, and you compute it here, and then you could have. That would be, by the way, eight divides out, so it'd be five minus three. You could start with eight two, for example, and eight two better be on this line. I hope I didn't do that too fast. Eight divided by eight is one, one times five is five, five minus three is two, yeah. So that's another point on the line, and we could have used this point instead of this one. And we would have moved up five and over eight, but we run out of room. So therefore you, you wouldn't be able to use this point because on this tool, you wouldn't be able. When you get a tenth. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. So <laughs> this point, my wife came and gave me the business. Okay. She, okay. Uh, I know who's in charge here, guys. Uh, no fair. I don't, know, I don't know what it is with ladies, huh? You guys take take charge over the men. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so what are we going to do here? And now I'm getting a note from my daughter. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're going to move. How much rise are we going to go? Five. So we count five from a point that we already know is on the line. So if we were graphing this on our own paper, we could use this point, but we can't on this because it has to be inside this picture here. So go from here and move up five. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, is that a point on the line or, or is that, or do we still have to move the run we have to run. We have to do the run amount as well. So eight is either left or right. Positive eight means you go to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How about that? We landed on this point, huh? So, cause we knew this point was on the line. It was just by luck though, that we landed right on this one. It could have been some other point that was on the line. So this is a second point that's on the line. By the way, if you're wondering, we did the rise first and then the run. We could have also done the run first, move one from here, move eight to the right, and then move what? Five. Five up, and you also will get there. So you can, you can choose which one of these you wanna move first. It doesn't matter. Any questions there? No, sir. And now you, by the way, what if you wanted to go backwards? Instead of moving five up, you could move what here? Instead of five up, you could move five. Instead of five up, you could move five. Down. But down. that would have been a negative, no? Yeah. So if you put a, that's an interesting question. If you put a negative there, you just change the slope, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. But what if you put another negative right here? What's this negative divided by this negative become? Positive. So there's a little trick here. And if you have negative five over negative eight, that's the same thing as positive five eighths. So if you ever wanna move uh, in the other direction, you could say, I'm gonna move down five. And then what? Run not eight, but negative eight. So you move not to the right, but to the what? One, so you'd go over to negative eight. Uh, and I, one over. And this point right here better be on the same path as these other two. And, the, and I hope you can see that they are. No. So if you ever need another point, you can always move in the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. You don't have to, but if you want to. So now let's, are there any questions here? No. Okay, so now I'm going to clear my mess here and we're going to use the tool and we're going to graph. So we know it's a line, <clears throat> slanted line at that. And now it requires us to graph two points. So 
Uh, Megan, what was the first point we started with? I, I could have kept all that, sorry. But Zero, was, negative three. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was when we moved up how much? Up five. And over what? Eight. And that was this one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. By the way, this other point was the other one that we said if we went backwards. Down five and left eight. That's this one right here. Okay. So any questions on getting this line here? No. no Do we need to dash it? No. There, there no. Only if there is a less than or an inequality sign here greater than <clears throat> without the equal sign. And then that would mean not all these infinite points on the boundary line, but on one of these sides only, yeah? But we don't have that. Equals means the points, all, all of these points are solution points, and when you, and you connect them, you get all the solution points, and these points, all these infinite many points are the ones that make this statement true. So, or we say then, another way to say the set of all solution points is the graph of all of these points. Okay, so any questions here, ladies? <clears throat> no, sir. No, sir. So check it. We're good. And so now this is the same kind of thing. What? <clears throat> I don't see a plus B here. So what number could you always put right here, um, ladies, and not change anything? Sure. When you're when you're adding, when you're multiplying, you could put a times one, but when you're adding uh, or subtracting, what's the only number you can put here without changing it? Zero. A zero, good. So then this is your B and this is your slope. So if we want, let's just do this one fast. So where's the Y intercept? Uh, where on the, on the Y axis, what number is the y-intercept at? Y-intercept means it's gonna be a location on the y-axis, but which location? At one or two or negative two or negative five? No, it's what? Zero. Zero, which means this number is zero and the x number is always zero. Remember, if we live anywhere here, this x is always zero. Or we could have substituted uh, zero right here and then figure it out. Negative nine halves times zero is still zero, so y would equal zero. So there's different ways to get that uh, y-intercept point, but it's right here. So I'm gonna, but I said I was gonna do this one faster, so let's try to do it faster. Mm -hmm. So now what? Here is, <clears throat> excuse me, here is one point, which is the y-intercept. Uh, Patricia, what's the slope here again? Is it a positive or a negative one? A negative. Which means the slanted line is gonna go increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be something like this. How much does it decrease? How, at what? at what slope or at what inclination? How steep does it go down? Well, it depends on these numbers right here. So negative, um, we have nine over two. <clears throat> Patricia, can, does this mean this negative in front? Does that mean we're supposed to put a negative on both of these numbers or just on one of them? No, just on one. Mm -hmm. Good. And you can choose whichever one you want. So you tell us. It won't matter. The negative nine. Okay. So and this is rise over run. So then the rise is the movement in the y dimension, and the run is the amount of movement in the x dimension, and you can pick whichever one you want first. 
So uh, you will end up at the same point. So uh, Patricia, which one do you wanna move first? The rise movement, the run movement, you tell us. The run. Okay, and which way, run is which dimensional movement? The Y or the X? The X. And what's positive two gonna be? To the left or to the right? To the right. And do we just start at any point we want on this graph or do you have to start with a point that you know is already on the line? With the point that it's already on the line. And what's the only point we know right now that's on the line? Zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. So, okay, good, excellent. So now let's move and you said the run. So we're gonna move which way? To the right. Mm -hmm. Two. Pause. Have a drink of coffee. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, actually. <laughs> Even though it turned cold already, oops. And <laughs> now we're gonna move the rise. What's the rise, Patricia? What movement is that with respect to the X dimension or the Y dimension? The Y. Which is either up or down. And what's negative nine? Up or down? Down. And we're gonna go down. By the way, do I put a point right here, Patricia, or did we just take a break? Take a break. Yeah. And now we're gonna move which way? Sorry? And now we're gonna move which way? Uh, up nine or down nine? Down nine. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not really, I'm just doing this for, 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 for just for learning purposes. But this is not the line, that's just the movement. So now we have another point, and now the line is gonna be the one that connects these two points. This, this was just our movement, you don't actually graph that. So, so here's, a, here's another point on our line, okay? Uh, just for the heck of it, what if we went backwards, uh, Griselda? So what if we go right here and you say, I don't wanna move, uh, by the way, going backwards would just be moving this negative underneath and instead of on the nine, it would be on the two. But another way to say it is, instead of moving to the right two, you would move which way, Griselda? To the left. And then instead of moving down nine, you would move what? Up nine. And then we better get to a, that would be another point on the line. And that, that point and this point and this point, they better be all on the same slanted line. Otherwise we made a mistake, yeah? Does that make sense, ladies? Yes, sir. Yes. But we only need two points. So um, I'm gonna come over, I'm going to do this. So we have one point already, and now we just pick a second point, well, whichever, whichever one. Uh, we'll take uh, Patricia's point right here, and now it grabs. And by the way, didn't it go through this other one that we went backwards on? Yes. Yeah. Any questions here, ladies? No. So we submit and hope that we are correct. Mm -hmm. And we are, very good. Okay, and clear. And let's see what else we have here. So same idea, same idea, same idea, except here, um, what looks, does anything look different on this equation, the way it's written, ladies? What, does anything look different right here? Well, the X and the Y on the left-hand side. Very good. They just put both letters are on the same side of the equal sign. Instead of here, the Y was all by itself, huh? So this form right here was the Y equals MX plus B, wasn't it? Is that okay? And this one is a different form. We could solve for y, 
and, and then turn it into this form and do the problem. Or we can leave it like this and do the problem. So I'm going to show you, not to try to confuse you, but to, to show you there's, there's other way, when the, when the line is in this form, and this is called, uh, what well, depends on the author, but I, I, it's called either general form or standard form. And I kind of, I tend to forget which one they call it, general or standard. Uh, I forget. But anyway, so <clears throat> whenever both letters X and Y are on the left side, and now there can be numbers in front, and then there's a constant term over here by itself, we can call this, and I'm sorry if it's either general or standard and um, standard form. I guess it doesn't matter that much which name it is, but general or standard form of a line. And we could solve for y. Um, how would we solve for y, Megan, here, if we wanted to? So one method is convert it into y equals mx plus b form, and then we do what we were doing above on the previous problems. So I'm not, I want to just show you the first step if we were to do that. What would, what would happen when we solve for y? But then I want to show you another way is if you just leave it like this. So that way we have more, uh, we have more sophistication. Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning. Uh, we have more sophistication, perhaps if we can put it that way, and we could do more than one thing. And if this, maybe if this was, the doing this the first week of school, I wouldn't have said this, but since we're instead we did chapter one later, I think it's okay to 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 show you these extra things because I think you are more likely to be comfortable with this already. So, but anyway, uh, Megan, what would happen? Um, what would happen if we did solve this for a while? What would we do first? Would we get rid of the multiplication of four? Uh, uh, get rid of this addition of 9x term, what would we do first if we wanted to solve it for y and do the problem that way? Because that's what most people are going to tell you to do. To subtract 9x from each side. And what would happen when we do that? We would have 4, what would we still have on the right, on the left side, I'm sorry. 4y. So you would divide by 4. Good. And what would be on the other side? How, what would happen to this positive next, 9x? It would become what? A fraction. No, before you divide by 4. You're, you're going oh. too fast for me, Megan. Cut oh, I'm out. sorry. It'll be a, a negative 9x. I'm just teasing, okay? I'm glad you could do that in your head. And then there would still be what, over, what other number is still over here? Plus 16. Mm-hmm. And then you would say, do what to get rid of the multiplication of four? You would have to do what? Divide by four. And that's what you were doing already, which is awesome. So this is the most popular way. Uh, and most, uh, most people will say, do this. What happens to the four divided by four, Megan? They cancel out, so you're left with y. Does this divide out or no? No, it's left as a fraction. And that is our slope, huh? Yes. And what about 16 divided by four? Four. And now what form is this called now, uh, Megan? The y equals mx plus b. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, by far, the most popular way to do this problem is to change it like that and now do the problem just like we did up above. Is that okay, ladies? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So you're welcome to do that every single time. I'm just going to show you one other way, and you may or may not like it. 
but what happens if you leave it in this standard form? So this is not as popular, but it is, it also is very nice in my opinion. And if we leave it like this, then, because what did the slope turn out to be ladies up here when we did it this other way? The slope was what? Nine fourths. Negative, Negative nine, nine fourths. So here the slope is negative nine fourths. And that would be your rise over run. And then you can, and then the y intercept is four. And we could do the problem like we've been doing already. Okay. And y intercept four means the entire point is zero comma four. So, but I do wanna, just to add a level of sophistication, if you will call that, if it's in this form, you also have the following choice. Oops. You have the following choice, which is There's a formula to compute slope when it's in this form. It's negative one, it's very simple, it's very quick, just not popular for some reason. And remember, this was, the general form is called ax plus by equals c. So this number right here is the capital A. And what's, um, Griselda, what's this number called up for this general form? Not the A, the but the, the capital B. B. And this one, uh, Patricia, is the what right here? The capital what? Mm -hmm. So. Here is the formula when you leave it like this to compute the slope, you use this formula. Negative one, that's just a negative one, times A, the A number, divided by the B number. Okay? And when we use this formula, we better get the same thing we did it, we would have gotten the other way, which was the negative nine fourths. So let's try. So the slope or M slope equals negative one times, um, Griselda, what was our A value for this problem? What's the number that's multiplied in front of the X? Nine. And what's the number that's in front of, that's multiplied in front of the y? If this is a negative, you would have to write negative, okay? But it's not negative, it's what? Four, positive. Mm -hmm. And now, what is negative one times nine, Griselda? Negative nine. Over what? Four. Four. Isn't that the same slope that we got when we did it this way? Yes, sir. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what about how could we get the y-intercept if we were going to leave it in this standard form instead of solving for y? And again, Square. there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It is by far the most popular way. However, this has its nice niceties as well. What do we always do to get the y-intercept, ladies? To be on the y-axis, what one of these addresses, one of these dimension numbers are the same, and which one was it? Which one of these is the same number all the time? The y. So what happens if we if we live anywhere on this y-axis? What dimension is the same? 
is the, the y. The x is zero. The x is zero, good. So plug zero into this equation and solve for y. And so what would happen? We would get nine times x plus four y equals 16. But instead of x, what are we always gonna put for the y-intercept? We're always gonna put what number? Zero. Mm -hmm. And we better get four, right? Or the point zero four. So nine times zero is zero. Zero plus four y would be just what? Four y. Mm -hmm equal to 16. And then how do we get rid of multiplication of four? Of course, we would what? Divide by four. Mm -hmm. You guys are getting tired, aren't you? Yeah, me too. We're almost there. And what would we get? Y equals what? Four. Four. And isn't that the same we got doing it this way up here? So your choice, you can do it this way or this way. Well, right now you probably feel this way is better and that's fine. Uh, eventually, if you do leave it this way, this also becomes just as quick uh, as up here, but it's completely up to you all. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, now we do the problem. So, uh, Griselda, how are we going to graph by using the slope in the y-intercept point? Do we do the slope first, rise over run, and just pick any point on the graph on the on our graph over here, or do we have to pick a point that's already on the line? The one that's on the line already, sir. Good. And do we know any point that's already on the line? Yes. The four. Which one, Griselda? The four for the y. Oh, the four on the y, good. So here, and then how are we gonna get another point on this line, Griselda? Now we do the rise over the run. Very good. And remember, you whichever one we're looking at, you could put the negative on the on, next to the rise number or to the run, whichever you like. Yeah, but it has to be on one of them. So let's say we just leave it like this. Now, what do you want to do first, Griselda? The run, the rise, which, what do you want to do first? Um, we'll do the, the rise. And what's the rise amount? Positive uh, nine or negative nine? Negative nine. So that means we're going to start with our point and move which way? Down. So down nine, so that's four already. And that would take us all the way down to negative five. So if, I mean, you could draw a little line, but I'm, I'm just counting. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now is that an actual point on the line, Griselda, or is that like a taking a break here? A break. And now we're gonna do the run. And the run is the, with the, the first dimension movement, left or right, words, and what's positive four mean? We're gonna move which to way? To the right, to the right, sir. So we move four to the right, one, two, three, four, now, <clears throat> so this point, I, I have to, I don't count that, right? That was just a, a pause. That was, we had a little coffee break after we did one of the movements. Now the line will be the line that connects these two points, okay? And if we wanted to go backwards, uh, Patricia, how could we go backwards if we wanted to? Instead of saying uh, go down nine, we could move which way? Nine up. Nine up, and that would be way up here somewhere, huh? Yeah. And then what about the four? Negative four. And you'd move this way, and you would be around way up here somewhere. It's just not on the graph paper there. But if you did have graph paper that went up that far, then that point better be on the same line as these other two. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. 
So now we can um, fill in the answer here. So we click the slanted line. We first, what are we gonna, we first pick a point and uh, it shouldn't, uh, excuse me, it shouldn't matter what point. Um, so we started with the winder up, so I'll pick that one. I can't pick one up here, it won't, it won't let me because it's outside the box. So we pick this one. Now I was drawing this freehand, so I was off a little bit, but if you went up nine and over four, I hope you can believe, it's reasonable to believe that it would be on this extended line here. And now we check it. <laughs> There's no inequality less than or greater, so we're not being asked to, uh, which would mean the solution set would be all, all the points on this side or the other side, but they're not, that's not what it says here. So it's only the points on the line itself. And we are correct. Any questions here, ladies? No, sir. <clears throat> no, sir. No. Very good. And let me erase. And okay. Well, that's the last problem there. And that's the same idea, but it's already in y. It's already in y equals mx plus b form. So might just leave it like that. Same with this one. Same with this one, we did it. Same with this one, and we did it. And this one, there's a video if you wish to watch, but it's the same problems we were doing here. It already just, it, it helps us out. What form, of course, uh, Megan, what form is this line in as they give it to us right now? It's already in what form? The y equals mx plus b. Good. So what's the what's the y intercept? Two. Two where? On the x axis or on the y axis? On the y. So it'll be zero two. Very good. So notice what they wrote here. Did they write? Did they write the y intercept as the full point or just the number on the y axis? Just the number. Mm -hmm. And as an ordered pair, as you said correctly, which is great, it's zero two. Mm -hmm. So I hope you understand that little distinction there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the slope, what can we always put underneath the slope, Megan? A one. So then this would be rise over run? Yeah. Yes. And what kind of slope is this? Positive, negative? Uh, positive, so it'll increase. Very good. So then we're supposed to match, huh? Yes. So um, these are both increasing. Notice this one's a lot steeper than this one. Um, this looks like it's two right here. Three, four, five. This one is also two. So, so far, it could be any one of those two. Um, what else do we have underneath? So all of them are increasing, uh, but where the y intercept here is not two, but it's at, it looks like it's what, Megan, here? Negative six. So that's out, isn't it? Yes. And what about this one? This, uh, this looks like negative one. It's not even negative one yet. So this one's mm -hmm. also out. Mm -hmm. So now we know it's one of these first two, this one or this one. So now, Megan, what piece of information can we still use to figure out which one it has to be between the these two? The slope. So you're going to rise three and go to the right one. Very good. So okay. it's A. You should be teaching this, Megan, not me. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go, let's check. Up three. Yes. So one, two, three, have a coffee break, and then move over, run, how much? To the right one. And does that put it, does that look reasonable, like that's one right there? Yes. So this looks good, doesn't it? Yeah? Yes. What about this one? I better no. be wrong, huh? If we move up, how much? Three. 
take a break and move over how much? One. Are we back on the line or no? No. So this one can't be right, huh? Right. So it has to be this one. Any questions there, ladies? No, sir. No. So good. And then we pick. Instead of clicking right here, they just uh, tell us. This one is option A. A. So we do that. And where am I? Where are we? <laughs> this is number eight, and we are correct. Very good. So, so there's one thing left, and that's it. Okay. Um, here, everyone, we let's just read this quick. It looks intimidating with all this. I mean, you're welcome to watch the video there. Um, Patricia, can you read this, please? Suppose that between two points on a line, the, the race is four, the run is one. What is the slope M of the line? Very good. So they're saying, um, Patricia, between two points on a line, the rise is how much? Four. Four. So which way would that be? Up, down, left, or right? Which way would that be if it's the rise? Up. Up four. <laughs> Pretend that was up four. That's not a very nice straight line. Oh, <laughs> well. and then what's the run, uh, Patricia? One. And which way does that have to be? To the right. Mm -hmm. And this would be another point, this would be a, another point on the line, yeah? And then mm -hmm. the line would be connecting those two points. And I'm, I'm having a hard time here drawing this. But anyway, so that would be our line. And now what's the question, uh, Patricia? What is the what? Slope and slope. So what, so what slope again? Four. So it'll be rise over run, and you mm -hmm. already did it. You girls are faster than me, cut that out. Okay, now that's great. That means you know what you're doing. So it's four over one, and that equals four, doesn't it? Yes. So that's what we would put, four. So four goes there, and they don't, we could write four over one, but there's no need. And we're correct there. So, uh, <clears throat> so there's there's two little tiny things left, and and then we're done. So let's see here. I'm gonna clear the drawing. Okay. So there's these couple problems right here, where they ask us to find the slope. We could do this in two ways. We could um, draw it and then just count the rise and the run. So, excuse me. Um, so I'm gonna borrow one of the graphs that's above or below here. I guess it's below. And I want us to remember, so help me out ladies, two four is a point on the line and the other one is six one, okay? So I'm gonna to move to a graph just to help us to do this one way. So I already forgot, so I need help, okay? What was the first point? Two, four. Two, four. Thank you. And the second point? I don't know. Six, one. Six, one, see, Gris uh, I'm with you, Griselda, okay? <laughs> Six one. I was. I thought it was four one, and I I, I did forget actually. Sorry. Uh, so six one. Now connect that, and this would be our line. Our 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 line that goes through. That's pretty terrible. 
Um, but what we want is the slope. So we can start here or start here and count. And either way, we'll get the same slope. It's, by the way, what kind of slope does this have to be? Positive or negative slope? Negative. Negative. So, uh, so one way to compute the slope is when they give you two points is just to draw them and then count. And that's a nice way to do it. Rise and the run. So, <clears throat> um, Griselda, do you want to start with this um, 2, 4, or do you want to start with the 6, 1? Your choice. 2, 4. 2, 4. And now we're going to move uh, to this point so that we can count, so that we can compute the slope. And you can choose, Griselda, do you want to do the rise movement first, the run? You get to pick. Uh, the rise. So from starting here, you said, now we got to get to this point. So are, are we going to move up or are we going to have to move down to get to this point? Down. And how, what is a downward movement? Is it's that a, a positive distance, a negative distance? What is that? Negative, sir. And now we count. So we're gonna have to go, so that's one unit, two units, how many units? Negative three mm -hmm. over six. And now we move the run the and point. you're saying that's- To the right. So you gotta be careful. So that's one, two, three, how much? Five, five. Five. I'm having trouble counting here. Let's so we're at. Four. So One, does this two. have we have I taken a, a giant leap yet, Priscilla? No, no. No. So now I've taken a leap, One, a step. So that's one unit, two, three. What? Four, four, four. Do you understand? Yes. So the slope is negative three fourths. And we would be done. Any questions there? No. If we would have moved the other way, we could have said, oh, I want to run first. And that would be four. And then I'm going to do the rise, which would be down, which would be negative three. And we would have gotten the same answer. Yeah. The, the run is on the bottom, four, and the rise is the negative three and that's on the top. If you would have started here and gone up to this point, then it, then you would have said, oh, I'm gonna move up. What's upward movement? That's not negative anymore, it would be what? Positive. So if you started with this point instead of this point, if you move up, it would be three. But then now you have to move this way, and what's leftward going to be? Positive or negative movement? Negative. Negative. And then you would have said negative here. So if you did start with this point instead, then you would have gotten this instead of this. But aren't these both negative three-fourths? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't matter when you start to count whether you start with this one or with that one. Any questions there? No, sir. No. What's the other way to do this computation of slope? It's to use a formula. And the formula is slope the slope formula between two points. So M equals, and if we have two points, so X1, call one of them the first point, X1, 
comma y1 and say the other point is the second point and it doesn't matter which one you call the first or the second just like it didn't matter when we counted but let's say we do it this way and let's say the second point is the 6 1 and the first point was the the 2 4 okay so another way to compute slope uh, ladies is instead of counting like we did right here that's just to use this this formula and on the rise it was the amount of movement with respect to the y dimension and another way to do that instead of counting is just to take the second y value minus the first one and then let's do that And this is going to be the same thing as counting. So we, so we better get negative three or three. It just depends which one we called the first point or the second point. But either way, when we're done, we're going to get negative three fourths. So if we call this the second point, then this one right here is the second y value. So. Um, Griselda, which one are we going to write here? The second y value is one. So I'm just good. So it's one. I'm going to do it like this, just. And then this is y two minus y one. So what's our first y value? Four, positive four. Mm -hmm. And what is one minus four, Griselda? Negative three. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we have here? Yes, sir. And then on the bottom, Griselda, what do you think we're going to do to compute the run? Instead of counting, we're going to subtract what number is here? X2 minus X1. So I hope that makes sense, lady. This formula is not some magical mystery. And, and I hope by showing you the counting method, it also helps us understand this formula right here. So of why it works. So what's our second X value, Griselda? Six minus, minus two, which is four. And we get the same answer either way, don't we? Yes, sir. Any questions with the slope formula? No. Very good. I'm going to clear this, go back. And remember, we borrowed that graph just to do the problem. And we got a slope of negative 3 over 4, or it was 3 over negative 4, either way. And we are correct. Any questions here, ladies? No. no. Okay, last thing, and then we're done for this lesson. So these other problems are the same thing. You can count or use the formula. And there's one left that I want to show you because it's something unique, and that is number four. Okay, so I'm going to remember these two points here, and we're going to go down and use the graph again. So 7, 7, and 7, negative 6. Okay, so last one. <laughs> so we had 7, 7. Let's say that's the first point. And the second point is um seven negative six thank you
and x2, y2. So to get the slope, we can do it, we can do it in two ways. Count the rise over run or use the computational formula. And either way uh, should work and give us the same answer. But this one has a unique property here that I, and that's the reason I'm picking this one. So let's see. Uh, the first, well, the second point was seven, negative six, you're saying, okay. And the first point was seven over and seven up. Isn't there a drink called seven up or something like that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I know I have to say it. And now connect that line and here is this line. Oh, if I could draw. No, if I could use this mouse, it's kind of not so easy with the mouse. So it's undefined. Oh, why the heck is that? So first of all, you're right, very good, Gisela. What kind of line is this, ladies? Is it slanted, horizontal, or vertical? Vertical. Vertical, which means it's only moving in one dimension. And when it's one dimension, it's only one letter. So the equation would only be one letter. That means that's either X right here or Y. X or Y. So what happens if we're a little creature on this line right here? Yeah, one of the dimensions is staying the same. What dimension am I, what dimension, if I'm, if we're cruising on this little line right here, what dimension is changing? Am I moving left or right? Or am I moving up and down? Up and down. So what dimension is up and down? That's the one that's changing. The Y. So good. What dimension is not changing then? X. So that's what goes right here on the equation. X does not change. It's always equal to a number. So what number does it always equal? Well, what happens if you're anywhere on this line? What's the X dimension value or number? Seven. Seven. Good, it's over seven, yeah? So this equation would be X equals seven if they would have asked us to write the equation. So any questions with that? No. Now, uh, well, compute the slope. So what if we wanted to do it by counting? That would be one way. The other way would be uh, to get the slope would be to use the formula. So, and if you ever use the formula, I would be careful early on or always in, in uh, I got a little sloppy on the last one. I didn't do it on the bottom, but put the parentheses in in case you have negative numbers because that's when we tend to make mistakes. But anyway, let's do the counting first. So, uh, Patricia, do you want to start counting from this bottom point or from the top point? Your choice. From the bottom. Okay. Now, do you want to count the rise first, the run first? Which one do you want to count first? The rise. The rise. Okay. And then you said start down. You said start down here or at the top? I forgot. On the bottom. Okay. So we're gonna move, how are we gonna to get to the other point up here? We're gonna move up 
that's the rise, huh? And how much is that? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Count for me. How much is that? How much? It's um six here and seven 13, more. 13. So it's a total of 13. 13. Good. Positive because we you said you went from here upwards. Yeah? So that's a positive yes. movement. Now, uh Patricia, now we gotta do our run. Okay, so we gotta we moved up from the first point and we gotta get to the second point. So we did our rise, 13 up. And now we got to move left or right to get to the to the point. Well, aren't we already at the point? Yes. So do we need to move left or right? No. If we did move left, it would be a negative amount. If we moved right, it would be a positive amount. But what happens if you don't move at all? Because you don't need to, because we're already there. Then what's no movement mean? A zero. A zero. Very good. Mm -hmm. So we get slope of 13 over zero. And if we do it this way, we better get 13 over zero as well. We might get negative 13, depends on uh, which points we call the first and second. But Patricia, uh, which if we use our up here, this is the second point and this is the first point. So what's our y2? Negative six. Mm -hmm. And seven and what is our x2 for the run what's our second x seven and seven mm -hmm. and what do we get in the bottom seven minus seven is what zero and good, and negative six minus seven is? Negative 13. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're panicking and saying, well, we got 13 on the other one, well, this value right here is the same as this one. It's just, uh, if we would have called this one the first point and this one the second point, we would have gotten the positive 13. Um, and this is unique because uh, on the bottom, we have a zero. Now, Griselda said that's undefined. That's true. So this is undefined. But I want to just take a moment here to explain to you all why is it undefined. So let me ask you this, ladies. Uh, I'm just going to pick another number. How about four divided by, oh, I don't like that. Uh, how about 20 divided by four? And of course, that equals what? Five. Five. Why? Simplify it. Because five times what? Four. Equals what? Twenty. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't too shocking, was it? Yeah? Nothing, you're like, what are you doing, Mr. King? Why are you telling us this? What's 20 divided by two? 10. 10. Prove it, prove it, lady, because why? 10, Ten times two. what? Two. Equals what? 20. How about 20, I'm sorry. Zero, oh, that looks really wonderful. Zero divided by eight. Zero. Zero. Prove it, lady. Why? <laughs> eight times zero is zero. Because zero times what? Eight. Equals what? Zero. Which is this one up here, huh? Mm-hmm. So yes, check. Okay, now the magic moment that we're trying to get to. Mm. How about 13 divided by zero? 
You can't. What does that equal? You can't. It can't equal to 13. It can't, huh? No. Very good. A lot of people might say the answer is, thir uh, is zero. Question mark. Prove it, lady. Okay. What's zero times zero? zero. So this one times this one, what's that? Zero. Zero. Did we're, but we're supposed to get 13. Did we get 13? No. No. So this answer is wrong. No. 13 divided by zero is not zero. What else do you think people might guess? 13 divided by zero, oh, it's 13. Why? Well, what is 13 times, what happens if you multiply these two? You better get back to 13, otherwise we're, our answer was wrong. But what is 13 times zero? Zero. You all fell asleep, huh? What's zero. 13 times zero here? It's what? Zero. Zero. So, but we're supposed to get 13. So this is wrong. So lastly, 13 divided by zero. Is there any number we can put right here? Does any number work? Just zero. Does any number work here? Mm -mm. If we spent the rest of our lives, you said zero? Just well, zero. what happened when we put zero here and we checked it? What was zero times zero? Zero. I didn't get back to 13. Oh, no. Then no number. There is no number that works here because... What happens if you put any number here and then you multiply it back times zero? What's always gonna happen? You always get zero. You're always gonna get zero, great. And you're never gonna get back to what you're supposed to get back to, which is what? 13. So that's why, and that's a big, uh, a big idea and I hope it makes sense. So that's why if you have 13 divided by zero, is there any number that can work right here or no? No. No. No number is possible. There is no number that is possible here. And another way to say no number is possible is to say there's no defined number here that works. No defined number that works. And another way to say no defined number that works is to say uh, it's an undefined, it's undefined. There is no defined number that works. So they call this undefined or they also say does not exist. There is no number that exists that could work right there. Does not exist, undefined, or you could say there's no number that's possible or that works here. So that's why whenever you see uh, four or 13 divided by zero or anything like that, you're gonna say undefined. It's not just some magical word they put there. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. yes. So what's going to happen every time we have a vertical line like this? There, is there ever going to be a run when you have a vertical line between two points and you move up to the other one? You're only going to have a rise, but are you ever going to have a run amount? No. Which means the bottom number will always be what when you have a vertical line? What's this bottom? Zero. 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 Good. And what happens when you have a number divided by zero, which is what's going to happen every time on a vertical line when you compute the slope? What's going to be anything divided by zero? It's always going to be what? Undefined. Or you can say it does not exist.
There is no number that exists that works right here. Does that, I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if we did that in class already before. Does this look familiar from our class or any other class? No. This little, this little explanation right here. No. No, but does it help you? Yes. I hope you understand what we mean when we say undefined now, instead of it's like a mystery. Okay, so we can clear this. And go back up. And this was problem number four. And what happened when we computed the slope? Yeah, did we get a number or undefined? Undefined. Undefined. So now we just type undefined. And sometimes they say put does not exist. Neither one is fine. Whoops, you got to spell it right. Undefined. And we are good. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, I hope that helps you all. And so that should help you do both section 1.3 and 1.4, I hope without too much difficulty. Um, Wednesday, I mean, Thursday, we're gonna look at two more sections, 1.5 and 1.6. As I tried to say earlier, we're going to try to move through chapter one more quickly. And then there's one chapter after that, chapter two. Okay. And that'll be our course. So, well, any comments or questions before we, we stop the, the meeting? No, sir. No. No. Megan, are you good? I do have a question, but it's not necessarily related to this. Okay. Um, I don't know possibly if you've been in touch with Ms. Ferguson. And I know you gave the instructions for us to start on 3.1 for her class. Yeah. But on um, WebAssign, there's two different classes for her name. So one of them, it, I think it starts at 1.1. And then right now on the other one, it's actually doing matrices like we were just doing with you. And it's like 8.1. So I've been doing both assignments and she hasn't gotten back to me about whether we're supposed to be doing both. But I don't see any grades posted or anything for her on class. Web assign? Yeah, on WebAssign. So you were supposed to, let me show you my screen because I... I um, built the class for her. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> That's true. I, I actually have.